In this video I want to share a couple of very powerful tips with you if you are using Luminar as a plugin for Lightroom. The first tip has to do with the preparation of your file. When your image is well exposed, you can send it over to Luminar just like that. But when it's over or underexposed and maybe has clipped shadows or highlights, then it's better to remedy that at the source. For example, in this image, the shadows seem to be blocking up under the bird's wings, the face of the man and the head of the horse. And pressing the J key in Lightroom confirms my suspicion. The areas in blue are pure black and if you send pure black over to Luminar, it won't be able to extract any detail from that. And the same goes with clipped highlights, by the way. So in situations like this, it might be a good idea to adjust the shadows or the highlight slider to give Luminar some more material to work with. In this case, I'll crank up the shadow slider in Lightroom and I'll also increase the exposure. So that was already a first tip. Now, I want to use Luminar to change the sky in this image as I find it a bit boring compared to the dramatic subject matter. Now, the regular way of sending an image over to Luminar from Lightroom is to choose Photo, Edit In, Edit In Luminar. This is fine and it may be the way you've been working up until now, but it has one drawback. The edits that you do in Luminar will be baked into the TIFF or the PSD file that you send from Lightroom to Luminar and therefore if you ever want to make changes to the edits you did in the plugin, you won't be able to. Instead, you'll have to start from scratch from your RAW file. Fortunately, there is a more flexible way which does involve a small extra step though. Instead of sending our image straight from Lightroom to Luminar, we're going to send it to Photoshop and from there on to Luminar. If you have a Lightroom Classic subscription, you're paying for Photoshop anyway, so you might as well use it. I'll walk you through the entire procedure, not only of getting there the first time, but also on how to re-edit your image. So, let's get started. And don't worry if you're new to Photoshop or if you think Photoshop is complex. We are only using it as a host application to Luminar. We won't actually be doing all that much in Photoshop other than opening Luminar from it. So, instead of choosing Photo, Edit In, Edit In Luminar, I will choose Photo, Edit In, Open as a Smart Object in Photoshop, all the way at the bottom of the interface here. This will send a TIFF or a PSD file, depending on how I set up my Lightroom preferences, over to Photoshop. The difference with the regular method is that Lightroom includes a copy of the RAW file with the edits I have made thus far as instructions alongside that file. Now the second difference, which is of more importance to us, is that the file will open as a smart object in Photoshop. This little icon here in the Layers palette in Photoshop indicates that this file is a smart object. Now, smart objects have many advantages which are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but their main advantage when using a plugin is that the plugin, in this case Luminar 4, will automatically be applied as a smart filter, which means you will be able to re-edit it. So, to apply Luminar as a smart filter, all I have to do is choose Filter, Skylum Software, Luminar 4. As you see, the plugin looks exactly the same as you would open it from Lightroom directly. So I'll go to the Creative Tool tab and select the AI Sky Replacement tool, and I'll choose one of my favorites, Dramatic Sky 4. As expected, Luminar does a great job of automatically masking in the new sky. I, I really cannot believe how much work it would be to do this in Photoshop proper. While I'm here, let's add a couple of finishing touches. One of my preferred tools is the Dramatic tool, and I'll just add a little bit to give the image some more punch. I think the image would also benefit from some extra structure, so I'll turn to the AI Structure tool as well. 
Finally, as I do with a lot of my images, I will desaturate the blues using the advanced settings in the color tool. To finish this image off, I'll add a vignette and I'll apply a LUT. I really like what Anaheim is doing, so I'll just select that one. Oh, and uh, just one more thing. I really would like to bring out the face of the horseman a little bit more, and Luminar has this fantastic slider in the AI Portrait Enhancer tool called Face Light. It finds the smallest faces in pictures even when they're tucked away in the huge fox fur hat. Look at how amazing it is. Ok, so now I'm really happy with this edit and it's time to bring the image back to Photoshop and ultimately to Lightroom, because that's where we started, right? In order to get the image back to Photoshop, all I have to do is click on the Apply button and you can see that Luminar has now been added as a smart filter. Now in order to get back to Lightroom, all I have to do is choose File, Save in Photoshop. It's important to just choose File Save and not File Save As or anything else, because Lightroom already reserved a spot with a particular name for this image in the catalog. If I want, I can now close out of this image in Photoshop and I can close Photoshop altogether and I will see the image appear in my Lightroom catalog from where I can continue to edit it or print it or export it or do whatever I want to do with like with any other image in Lightroom. Now, you might think that so far nothing has really changed from the Lightroom only workflow. But here's the big advantage of the smart object workflow. Upon closer scrutiny, I see that I have made a mistake when putting in the new sky. The depth of field, as you can see, doesn't really match. The sky, which is the furthest away, is actually a bit sharper than the mountain range in the background. Now, my mistake. Luminar has a slider for that, but I forgot to apply it. Now, had I done this entire edit in the Lightroom version of the plugin, I would have to do everything over again and hope I can even begin to remember which settings I used in the various tools. Thanks to the smart filter workflow though, I will only have to tweak the depth of field in the AI Sky Replacement tool. So how exactly do you do that? Well, you have to get this file back into Luminar. And this is where you have to pay attention. You actually want to send the file from Lightroom to Photoshop and then in Photoshop reopen the Luminar Smart Filter. When I choose Photo Edit in Photoshop, to get into Photoshop, I am presented with a rather intimidating looking dialog box. And the trick here is to choose the bottom option called Edit Original, and then hit the Edit button. This will open the file back in Photoshop, and now all you have to do is double click on the Luminar 4 Smart Filter. Now on the off chance that you might not see the filter as I'm showing it here, just click on the little disclosure triangle on the right hand side of the layer. This is the beauty of the smart filter workflow. Luminar will open with all its settings as you last left it, still intact and ready for you to change if you want to. It even highlights in white all the tools that you changed from their default values. For example, when I click on the color tool, I see that I dial down the saturation of the blues, and I can still change that if I want. But that's not the reason why we're back in Luminar. We want to blur the sky a little bit more, so let's head back to the creative section and choose AI Sky Replacement and click on the Advanced Settings button. There, I will drag the Sky Defocus slider until the blur of the sky matches that of the faraway horizon. When I'm done re-editing my image, I can hit the Apply button again to return to Photoshop. But before I hit File Save to return it to Lightroom, I want to show you one more thing. If I double click this icon with the double slider here, I can go into the Smart Filters Blending options. There's really a lot of things you can do here, 
But the one thing I want to show you is that you can actually dial down the effect of the filter to say 50% if you think it's too much. Anyway, I like it fine as it is, but I just wanted to show you that the option is there. And that's another benefit of smart filters. And the last advantage I want to show you is that smart filters come with their own layer mask. So if I wanted to, I could pick up a black or a gray brush in Photoshop and completely or partially paint away some of the effect of my Luminar edit. Now, as I said, I'm fine with the edit as it is. So I'll just choose File, Save and my re-edited file will return to Lightroom and now, at last, my sky looks as if it's always been there. Now, I wouldn't use this workflow for every image as it is a bit more convoluted, but if you do extensive edits and you suspect there's a chance you might have to revisit anything, then the smart filter workflow is definitely worth considering, especially if you have Photoshop on your computer anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I thank you for watching.